Hello, hello, my name is Leo and welcome to the first tutorial by Blau Films of 2021. First of all, I would like to wish you all a happy new year. Today we're going to be looking at how to create Jupiter, one of the biggest planets in our solar system at a whopping 69,991 kilometers in radius. We will be looking at how to create this using a few different volumetric settings inside of Corona Renderer. If you're using any other render engine, I'm sure you'll be able to have your kind of volumetric settings in there or have a look if you can use your subsurface scattering to achieve a similar result. So the first thing we did is I have some references pulled up here and the one on the left is the result that we made. And these other three are pictures I found from NASA on Jupiter. Now, the complicated thing when it comes to recreating planets is that it's very difficult for us to know what they actually look like. Each of these images are taken from the same planet, but they have different camera settings, and the bluey one at the bottom is even a spectral infrared image. The top two ones are basically our main reference for what we will be going for. As you can see on my image, we kind of ended up going for something slightly in between. Now, I managed to find a document that was explaining a little bit about the camera settings on the Voyager 1 space probe. What I found out is that there are basically two camera lenses attached to the Voyager 1. We have a 200mm, which is supposedly their wide-angle lens, and then they have a 1500mm lens for all of the longer close-up shots. Now, the 200 millimeter lens. I created a camera, made it a 200 millimeter focal length, and I added this corona tag with some camera settings. And your ISO and your shutter speed, that's basically what you will be able to have your creative freedom with. You're mainly going to be using the shutter speed to get the correct exposure value that you're looking for. Now, the 200 millimeter lens has a f-stop of 4.17 and the 1500 millimeter lens has an f-stop of 11.8. Now, except for that, I've given it a few simple camera settings. I have a highlight compression of 1.5. The camera white balance is set to 6500, a very neutral color temperature. I don't have the bloom and glare turned on, but I do have sharpening turned on on the default settings. And I have the depth of field enabled with a 8-bladed lens and um, bokeh center bias set to 1, bokeh vignetting to 1, and bokeh anisotropy to negative 0.5. So as you can see here, we have four layers that are making up the planet. At the bottom, we have the solid Jupiter. This is a sphere that I have scaled up to be 69,991 centimeters. Basically, we are working in centimeters because the abnormal scale of planets is just too big for this viewport to handle. But I do like to be working with some kind of similar unit, so when you start adding different planets together, or if you start adding a spaceship into the scene, at least this feels proportionally correct. Now, the Jupiter solid is just a sphere, but I've added this texture over here. If I go into my material editor, inside of the diffuse channel, I've added this 6K Jupiter texture that I found online. Now I've added it inside of a filter node where I just basically increased the brightness a little bit and, and I gave it a 2% contrast and I decreased the lightness a little bit. For the reflection, I gave it a glossiness texture over here. I basically took that diffuse channel from the Jupiter texture into Photoshop and then I played around with the black and white values to make sure that we're never really peaking above the 50% gray level. Remember, white is going to be a full glossy reflection and black is going to be completely matte and I don't want to be going over the 50% because as opposed to something like planet Earth where you have water surfaces and other rocky surfaces, Jupiter is just a gas giant so it wouldn't be able to be reflecting that much. I've even lowered the Fresnel IOR to 1.2. Usually I'm working at 1.6 as a standard value but for this I felt like let's really bring it down. 
Inside of the bump channel, I have added in that same glossiness map to just give it a little bit of breaking up of the texture all over the surface of this model. What I did then is I duplicated that Jupiter solid and I scaled it up by about 5%. If I look at it from the side, and it's a pretty dense mesh, look over here, you'll be able to see that this is the Jupiter solid, and then here we have the Jupiter core, followed by the Jupiter haze, and then the atmosphere is sitting right on top of there. The Jupiter core and the Jupiter haze have very similar textures. If I look at the texture on Jupiter core, I have the diffuse channel turned off, then the reflection stays the same, the bump stays the same, and then we've added that glossiness map inside of the opacity channel. Remember, we're never working with values higher than 50% gray, meaning that our Jupiter core is basically completely translucent. It's almost a little bit of a fog that's floating on top of the original layer. I've then went into the volumetrics and I've set the mode to volumetric scattering as opposed to subsurface scattering. Inside of the color, I've added the diffuse channel and inside of the scattering, I've added the diffuse channel as well. Now here we have the distance setting. You'll have to look at the volumetric settings in your own render engine. Inside of Corona Renderer, the higher you take that distance up, the less intensity you'll be able to have out of your volumetric scattering. In this example, for the core, a value of 660 was perfectly fine. It's still present, but it's not more solid than the layer underneath. Finally, we have the directionality at the bottom set to negative 0.5. For the Jupiter Haze, we have a very similar texture, but with the only difference that we have increased the directionality to 0.85 as opposed to negative 0.5. If I take that directionality down to zero, you'll see that it basically becomes almost translucent. Now for the atmosphere, I've created a new volume material. So Corona volume material. When we did the Planet Earth tutorial and the Saturn tutorial, one of the things we noticed is that we need to have an atmosphere that refracts a lot of blue light. So in that case, we had an absorption color that was yellow and a scattering color that had a Fresnel gradient of some tones of blue. For the Planet Earth tutorial, I even went as far to take a picture of the early morning sky and then color sample those colors from our own natural atmosphere. The further away we get to planets like Jupiter, the more abstract these things start to get. So just from looking at these references and just really zooming in, I noticed that we probably need an absorption color of blue, as I'm not seeing that much blue interfering in the atmosphere of Jupiter. And for a scattering color, I've created a Fresnel, and inside of that Fresnel, I gave it a front-to-back gradient that starts with black and ends with black, the places where it becomes invisible. And then in the areas in between, I'm creating this gradient of light yellow with a little bit of green in there. Now, you can even take this one over here and make it darker if you want to be sure that you have more of the planet visible in the center. I gave it a directionality of negative 0.3 and we have a distance of 15,300 centimeters. Usually the rule of thumb that I've been using is make the distance of your atmosphere a fifth to a fourth of the size of your actual object. That will make sure that when the Fresnel hits it, it only appears on the edges and that you get that very natural fall off without, without completely filling up the front of your screen with the atmosphere. Finally, I would like to have a quick look at our sun settings. For the renders I did, I actually increased the size of the sun to 32, and I gave it an intensity of 2.5. The temperature of the sun is 6,500, a very natural color temperature. Now, you would usually decrease this size of the sun to be as harsh as possible, because if you're in space, think about it, it's basically you're surrounded 360 degrees by negative fill. Then you have one very harsh light source, namely the sun. In reality, when you think about it, it's not that simple, right? It's, most of it has to do with the mood that you want to portray in your imagery, and as well, there are also many other planets around it, there are stars around it. There's actually quite a lot of bounce light that you would probably be getting 
in space. Cool. Let's do a few quick renders. Um, let me open the interactive renderer over here and then we'll play around with the lights a little bit so you can more clearly see what it is that we're doing. So right now I have the sun pointed, kind of backlighting it. Um, let's quickly move to a different camera, move out a little bit. And because we're working with these massive distances, it's not as easy to move around this object. But we'll try to do our best. Now I'm going to be rotating the light little bit by little bit. And then we're going to be reintroducing quite a lot of the planet. Now you quickly start to get overexposed when you're looking straight at it. So what you can do there is just increase the shutter speed. And there you go. Now, what you could do as well is if you go into the atmosphere, as I was saying before, if you just decrease the value of this color over here, you see you have basically eliminated most of the atmosphere that was in the center and kind of fogging out most of our shot. You can also do that with this second color over here. Add a little bit of a tint. If I zoom in over here, we could probably color pick this. We've actually been working on a science fiction short film, Syntactic Labyrinth, for quite a while now. Actually, it's been taking way longer than expected. But I've gained a new appreciation for working and tinkering with all these planets in, uh, in Cinema 4D. And... Uh, yeah, I hope you can learn something from this. Let me show you what happens if I decrease the intensity to be a full harsh light. You basically get a very harsh shadow at the bottom. This is basically what you would do if you're trying to create some kind of a moonshot. Um, there, I usually love to work with harsh lights. I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a shadow diagonally, so. I'm going to increase the rotation angle a little bit, decrease the angle. I'm going to decrease the shutter speed to 1 over 500 so we get a bit more light in there. And one of the things that makes the difference between these two NASA images over here is that on this one, the color temperature is a bit warmer on the camera. And here we're working with a much colder camera temperature. So what we could do is we can just actually go into the white balance of the camera. We could bring that down to about tungsten light. So we bring that to a 3000 and immediately you can see that we're basically completely blue. If we have our camera balanced to tungsten light, which is generally speaking a very warm light, then the camera is going to be overcompensating by adding a shitload of blue to then create a white light when looking at tungsten. So if we bring that to like fluorescent, there you go. Now there we're getting a pretty much of a one-to-one -one match when it comes to color temperature over there. Now what I will do is I'm quickly going to increase a little bit of the intensity of the light. Not much, just a touch. And yeah, there you go. I feel pretty confident with the look that we're getting. So that's it guys, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you got to learn some basic techniques about how to create planets. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for staying tuned to this channel. I'm really enjoying the response that we're getting so far. And this year should be a great year. We're going to try to make the best out of it. Be sure to subscribe, like this video, comment down below if there's anything you want to see. If you're stuck with something, if you need any help, feel free to leave a comment. I'll be sure to reply. And uh, yeah, thanks. Cheers. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Now, before I leave, I was quickly doing a few more things. So I added this sphere and I just gave it a black material. And if you align it right in front of where your sunlight is coming, it's actually very fun to create these very ominous looking dark shadow spots all over your planets. Yeah, if I just duplicate that sphere and I half its values or let's say divided by four so slash four 
And then I move it a little bit to the side. We'll probably have to move it a little bit closer to the subject. Yeah, there you go. We'll have to move it a little bit closer because it's a smaller object. And there you go. We got this very ominous looking, almost like Death Star looking shadow that we got going on there. So yeah, definitely try these things out. And you know, like, okay, now we're just absolutely going ham. But create a cylinder, give it a radius of 25, something that's very tiny in comparison with these. I'm gonna align it towards our shadow is, which would be somewhere there. And now I'm going to increase the height, be super long. Okay, perfect, there you go. I'm gonna move it upwards and there and now i'm gonna go to create corona light material give it a intensity of 100 and a color that would kind of give it somewhere around here a hot burning color and i feel like we might need to increase oh there you go <laughs> there you go now we do need to kind of realign our laser a little bit that's good. And we could increase we could increase the radius to 210 just so we get a clearer view on that viewport. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's the end of Jupiter, right? Ooh, I actually really like the hot red, but let's try something like a uh, deep purple. Oh, that's very interesting. It almost looks, well, it is going inside, but the way we've positioned it, it almost looks as if there is a uh, a hole that's inside of the planet. Either way, I just I just thought let's turn on the recording for a quick second again and just show you what you can do with these planets and uh, how how to just you know have fun with it. And now that we're here, you know, let me just show you something else as well. On our ArtStation store, I have all of these different products. Um, some of them are free, like we have some decals, safety decals pack and uh, industrial decals. We have these realistic moon phases that are free as well and CRT TV diodes, UV checkerboard backdrops. These are great for just general everyday workflow, at least for me. And for all the people interested in screenwriting and directing, I've created this building worlds worksheet over here. It's free as well. Just feel free to download it. And uh, if you're ever having struggles with your stories that you're trying to come up with, it's a good exercise. It's a fun exercise that works for me. And, you know, maybe it works for you. What I feel might be relevant to you right now is this 100 organic starfields pack. For Syntactic Labyrinths, our new space film, I went through the trouble of extracting 23,350 real stars from real NASA imagery. I just ran this algorithm through it that extracted each one of them, and then I repopulated them inside of Trapcode Particular with a randomizer. And then I re-exported 100 different 32 bits EXR plates that are all completely random. They are 32 bits. And if you're ever trying to do something space related, or if you're trying to do some kind of day for night conversion, I feel like this is the best in the game right now. I feel like this is the best organic star fields pack in the game right now. 599, you can get it. There will be a discount code on the screen right now for all the people watching this video. And uh, yeah, cool. Cheers. See you later. Bye-bye.